Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and well, there is a new version of Space Engine available, which, um, as you know, builds an entire procedural galaxy. Well, actually, that's not true. It starts out with the real things nearby, and then travels out. As you travel out, you get the procedural content, and, well, frankly, it is gorgeous. This is a wonderful little planet here. And we're just going to land down on the surface and take a look at it. It's a desert planet. Look at that. We're, it's practically Tatooine here. I swear, this is amazing, huh? Um, what are we? we? I've no idea where we are. I just picked the nearest um, star system. I clicked on a star, flew to it, and wanted to see what was here. So this is a desert planet. We now have clouds. We also have a bunch of new features, and I'm going to see if I can find one. Uh, actually, we, we probably saw it when I was in orbit, but maybe once I come up, let's, um, well, how do I do this again? I'm just going to speed up and pull back. There we go. Look at that. Into the sky. Look at all those craters. And, well, we have these gorgeous rings. Aren't those, aren't those nice? Ah, and they look at this. No, this is a, this is a pretty darn cool looking, um, nebula there but look we have aurora we have aurora floating over the surface of this planet obviously they don't know if they actually change but clearly this planet has a magnetic field of some sort so that it can condense the aurora into the polar regions otherwise you would just see a kind of diffuse ionization all over the planet i would imagine but i don't actually know let's um let's head off into the distance let's just head towards this nebula and i'm just gonna try and fly manually. I'm just pushing forward and scrolling this thing up. I'm traveling at hundreds of AU per second. Oh, parsecs per second. Now you can see the stars flying around. I have no idea if that is a nebula or a galaxy or what, but you can see I'm moving towards it now at quite ridiculous speeds. And this is one of the more awesome things about this. I think this might actually be... I, I could find out. <laughs> I don't actually know what half these things look like. It, it's probably like a satellite galaxy or something because it does not appear to be growing at a particularly reasonable rate, a particularly fast rate. So might be a satellite. Yeah, it looks like we're, we're getting above and beyond the edge of the, the galaxy proper. We probably started in the Milky Way, I imagine. And uh, this is probably one of the satellites if i turn around if i just turn around and look back there's the milky way or at least um our interpretation of what the milky way might be now where were we going we were going towards this where are we located it says oh this is the large magellanic cloud huh i should have known that shouldn't i oh look let's let's slow down a little kiloparsecs per second whoa oh my goodness Ah, it's like a virtual snowstorm. What is this here? This big blob. It's it's a diffuse nebula. Let's uh, just press G to go to it. And of course, uh, pressing G will perform the autopilot for me. I have no idea what this might be. Um, because, you know, I tended to be a solar system type person and didn't really do that much observation. Ooh, that's a nice nebula. It's, it's I wonder what it is. Let's... uh. Let's just get in here, huh? Travel around. Ooh, layers and layers of dark clouds. Let's take a look at this star here. Let's go. I have no idea. It's an orange dwarf. A K-type star. Uh, I still remember how to... I still remember the sequence of star uh, star types being O, B, A, F, G, K, M. Yes. Ooh, with the Earth, with the the sun being a G-type star. Okay, so if there's oh, the, where there is planets in this solar system, what do we have? We have a hot gas giant really close. And actually, you know, you can fly right down close to the sun if you want. And I'm just gonna, if you do Shift G, actually, it will land. Oh wait, I I clicked on the wrong thing. Well, I'm gonna land on this gas giant. That's only so interesting. Let's get me up a little more. Does it have any moons? It does have moons. Let's take a look. It doesn't even show it. Let's go there. I have no idea where it is. Oh, there. Ooh, that's kind of a nice background there. 
This is a hot desert planet. Sorry, a hot desert moon. Um, no idea. But it does... Oh, you know one of the really nice things about this? Is you can really see... Now, hold on. If I rotate around this... Whoa, there's the, there's the sun, right? And I'm guessing... Uh, no, oh, there's a little... There's Aurora there. Now... I, now you notice how there's a really dark bit in the bottom and the lighter area on the side. That, I'll bet you, is because the planet is there. So this uh, is now shining in reflected light from the planet. So one side is, is blue and this side is completely dark. And you probably can't see my pointer, so this is obviously not such a good thing. But I'm going down to the dark side. The dark side. And what can I see here? I can't see very much at all. Let's move over the surface and see if there's anything that catches my eye. Let's get it. Ooh, what is that shiny thing? Oh, we have... It's kind of just rolling hills, I guess. How dull. But, uh, you know, that is the universe. The universe is full of all sorts of uninteresting objects. And then every now and then you get the really cool object. But actually, the closer you look, the more interesting every object gets. This is the thing, and, and I'm sure people spend forever getting lost in this and finding all sorts of interesting things. I've heard that one of the things they added, well, they actually, I don't know what they added, but somebody showed me some pictures of some oblate objects that were, whoa, my goodness, I've come to the bright side again. Oh, let's try and, oh dear, come out a little. Now it's gotta, okay, it's gotta go up. And I'm just not the best user of this. I still have not really done much to figure out what this is about, or to figure out the controls. I'm just wondering if my detail level has got a little low. This looks kind of dull. Okay. Well, well, what was that? That is the large Magellanic cloud. No, we do want to pick another nebula. What else can I pick? That is a yellow, oh, yellow dwarf, a G-type star, just like our sun. And so here we are escaping at some rate of knots. We'll probably fly through the edge into this deep cloud. We should totally look for something like in this deep molecular cloud here. Ooh, I wonder, I wonder what secrets this shadowy nebula holds. Well, we have a star. Do we have um, F2? Oh, cancel. Okay, so we have something we... What do we go through here? We have Scorch, Selena, Selena, Hot. Wow, these are all pretty close to... These are pretty close to the surface, I think. Hmm, Cold Ice Giant. Yeah, these are... Like, this is a G-type star, and we have... Planets that are thousands of kilometers from the surface. Look, if I just go here, in fact, Shift G should make me land on it. Well, you can see the solar wind coming off this. So this is basically right below the sun. Look how big the sun is in the sky. This is, you know, what does it say? It says it's uh, height dwarf planet. Semi-major axis is. Um, six million kilometers so this is like right on top of the sun and this thing is just getting completely scorched by uh by living here basically by existing so close to it i wonder what the dark side looks like oh wow we got some mountains and everything uh what is the radius of this thing diameter is okay it's like 1500 kilometers so it's a it's like asteroid sized or it's dwarf planet sized and, ooh, wow, look at that. That, I have to say, there is something pretty awesome looking about that there. This star, what are these are? Yeah, this is, the thing is, like, I don't spend in nearly enough time exploring this. Is there anything else? No. Mmm, dwarf plants. No, no, no. Let's, let's go... I want to find, is there like a life-bearing world anywhere? Temperate. Oh, let's go there. Um, although it's not large enough. Well, let's just pick another star. Oh, this is, wait, that's a scorched asteroid? Let's go there. It's 
is like really close to the sun or to this sun. The sun itself is called RS eight four zero five three dash six five one five whatever. You can go and search for it if you like. But apparently this is simply an asteroid, and I wonder what the semi-major axis. Uh, the same. It's actually further from the further from the sun than the planet. Ooh, look at that. Although we should not be able to see the Milky Way in the background. As soon as you're looking at something like this, the reflected sun sunlight from this would completely dominate your eyes. There is, of course options to uh, fix this. Uh, you can actually click on this, you see, and it adjusts the real planetary brightness, but there's ways also to make all the views match up. Um, I wonder if that would actually matter. What's this? Scorched asteroid. Another scorched asteroid. There's all these things just, you know, clicking around here. Orange, oh, binary orange dwarf. Let's go there. I haven't even looked at any real objects yet. Let's, um... Look at it. Aha, uh -huh. we have the Barry Center. We have a B type. Wait, is that? No, it's an M type star and a K type star. Let's zoom in. Let's click on this one and we'll go to it. Are we going to go? It's still thinking. Velocity is several AU per second. 33 AU per second, we're getting in really close. There we are. One and the other. Ooh, that's a nice red one. Look at the sunspots on that, eh? It's practically leopard skin, huh? You can, of course, get down really close to some of the stars and uh, explore them. This one doesn't have the solar wind that's going off. I wonder if we can find, like, um, a large... I don't know, what's... what's I'm trying to remember. Ooh. I'm trying to remember some awesome looking stars. So yeah, this is a okay. This is a blue main sequence star, and of course, all the people that complained in my uh, solar two video that uh, I they kept on saying, "Oh, why you you know surely the red stars are the biggest and heaviest stars." And if you remember Solar Two, that was a game where you flew around as a, a planet. And then you acquired mass, and if you got enough mass, you became a star. And I commented saying that the first, as, as you go, you get the least amount of star of mass, and you become a star. Then uh, you became a blue star, and I said that's stupid. If you become a star, the first thing you should become is a red star. And people were like, "What? No, no! Red stars are all the giantest, most giant stars in the universe. Therefore." They must be the most massive. But those people do not understand astronomy properly. Um, so, yes, it's true that the many of the largest stars in the universe are red stars, but they are not the most massive stars. You see, there's something called... Well, yeah, there's something called the main sequence, right? The, that's the main hydrogen-burning sequence uh, of stars. Let's look at that center again. Uh, okay, I've completely lost it now. Oh, that's a Wolf Rayet star. We should go there. Oh, that's only... Nah, never mind. Let's not go there. Don't know why I had that selected. Uh, I'm actually kind of looking around for... Yeah, that's a blue main sequence star. Um, and that is another blue main sequence star. Yeah, this is a b two stars that are binaries, and that's not very interesting. We should probably find something else nearby to look at. I'm kind of exploring the Magellanic Clouds for... Um, for, you know, to actually see if I can find the, the Tarantula Nebula, but I'm not sure if it's in the game. I tried searching for it and the Tarantula Nebula doesn't show up, but the Tarantula Nebula has the most massive star in it. It's a Wolf Rayet star, which has something like 240 solar masses. Anyway, um, the main sequence is basically when stars are in the kind of prime of their life. They are burning hydrogen and converting it you know into light and heat and they stay on this for most of their life because most of the energy comes from hydrogen burning and it's only once they run out of hydrogen to burn in their core that they start to evolve away from it right so the main sequence basically with, starts with the lightest stars being red because they are the coolest 
and the heaviest stars are blue and the reason is the heavier stars produce higher temperatures and pressures at the center and therefore they burn fuel faster. So they're hotter and we end up with uh, the blue stars being the heaviest. Now what happens is eventually the stars run out of hydrogen in their core and what they've done is they've converted the hydrogen into helium and the helium sort of sinks to the middle and gets squished down. Now the problem is if your star isn't doesn't get hot enough to actually burn this helium then it will form a degenerate core and that's where quantum mechanics stops the core from collapsing any further and on top of this the the hydrogen the the unburnt hydrogen remains and it will slowly get squished down against it and because it's getting squished down against this it ends up actually burning fuel faster did i go to this one let's go here let's take a look at this and because it starts to burn fuel faster, because it's getting squished up against this, um, the star ends up producing more energy. And so what happens is the outer layers have to get rid of this energy faster. And to do that, they increase their surface area. But they increase the surface area faster than... Um, well, they increase it at such a, in such a way that they actually cool down. But because the surface area increases faster they actually end up putting out more energy overall. And that's them, they become a red giant. So they go from being like a yellow main sequence star and then they puff up to be a red giant. And they're actually emitting more energy. And it's all to do with this hydrogen degenerate, this helium degenerate core. And that is the most simple way of seeing it. So the point is red giants are largely not main sequence stars anymore. They have left the main sequence and they are heading into their old age and eventually they will either die they will die in some form or another some will um well there's many options Ooh, flying across the surface of this planet let's do it at some reasonable rate this is traveling at a kilometer per second it just looks kind of like i don't know i don't know bacon Ooh, i like that that's that's kind of cool i wonder I wonder uh, if I could get a shot of that with the sun rising through it. Um, warm desert planet, 1 AU away. That's a pretty good temperature. What does it have? 300. Wait a second. A red giant? It says an orange dwarf. That's a K-type star. Let's uh, come out. Let's let's actually find, look, search for something. Uh, no, F3. Let, let's, let's go back to Earth. Forget about the LMC. Let's take a look for Earth. Go, and it'll take us there on autopilot, hopefully. No. No. Let's press G. That'll let us go. Autopilot style. Look at that. Flying towards the Milky Way. Um, so, yeah, I mean, once a star is moved off the main sequence, that's when you get the large uh, giant stars forming. But normally, most red stars are actually dwarf red stars. They're small, they're like half a solar mass or less. And, you know, that's why I say that red stars are actually the least massive, because they are the least massive. Even when they evolve off the main sequence, that doesn't make them acquire mass suddenly, that means they just acquire size. And since the game, Solar 2, was all about acquiring material to increase your mass and become a star, that's why I said the game has got it ass backwards and should in fact have, well, well, should in fact have the first stars being red and the final stars being blue. Also, you know, blue type stars, those are the ones that are hot enough to produce things like uh, black holes. The, you know, they burn enough, whoa, hot enough to turn into supernova and eventually produce the black holes and the awesome collapsed objects that end up making the universe such an interesting place. Again, I have no idea. This is a Deneb. Okay, let's go there. I'm sure there's some interesting things here, but, oh, that's a uh, white main sequence. Maybe I should click on that one. Let's stop. No, eh, we're going faster. Oh dear, it's another blue one. I'm just clicking around until I see things. This is a red, oh, red giant. So a red giant, look at the, let's go here and see what it says. 
This has a red giant with seven planets. It may have had more, but some of those inner planets may have been absorbed by uh, the expanding outer layers of this planet. Or not this planet, this, this sun, this star that is growing up. Ooh, look at that. It has a very regular atmosphere. See, the atmosphere becomes very uh, turbulent and convective. That's the main thing. There's a whole thing in stellar evolution about convection versus radiati radiation for transferring heat inside the star. And I don't know how to actually restore these things. Uh, hot desert planet. What? How hot? How hot? How hot? Apparent magnitude. Oh, let's click on this. What does it say? This is four solar masses, so that's actually a pretty heavy one. This is possibly going to do something eventually. Cool ice giant. Hot desert. What is the temperature? I can never find this. 600. Wow, that's a really hot desert. And... Two, this is cold, and this is just about this is about the right size, and it has four moons. Let's go there. Maybe we'll find a moon which is habitable. There we go. Flying out towards it. I could just kind of explore this forever, but I can't really fill it with, um, you know, interesting chat about many of these things. I'm trying to make, make it up as I go along. So I think if I press a uh, right button? No, that only shows me two moons. I wonder what the other moons are. So how big is this? Uh, apparent? Is this? Hold on. Ooh, look! It's it's slight. That that looks. Is that look a that looks egg shaped to me? If you ask me, that's one of the things they added in the new update was non spherical planets, uh, as in you know the rotation can make it. I think that's non spherical. Eh, it's so hard to tell. Some of them are more oblate than others. Um, how big is this object? Rotation period, two days. Uh, apparently, I have a really hard time. 4,000 kilometers, that's actually a rather small thing. And this is even smaller. Let's go here. It'll probably have no atmosphere, given that it's such a small size. But it's nice and warm. We could probably just land on this thing. Look at that. Uh, another thing they added was... a. Uh, evaporating planets. I haven't found one of those yet. That'd be kind of cool. Let's let's get in really close. Actually, yeah, if I press this, how close in is this? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, yeah. Let's try flying up a little. It's now thinking really hard as it's trying to render a landscape of sorts. So you see it does it like in a hierarchy basically. I should stop messing with the mouse while this thing is rendering. I'm giving it a hard time. Okay. Now we're getting there a little or maybe not. It's thinking very hard. I did set the detail up. Oh, there. Oh. No, now we're getting something. Although it just does look like, you know, kind of coffee, I don't know pinkish coffee colored sheets all kind of crumpled um, can I just turn around on the spot not much oh there we got some more landscape you can I've been really nice if you could like maybe there's a way to do it maybe there's an awesome way you can set it to like take a movie you know record the stuff and render each frame in, in super high de definition that'd be a nice thing to try let's go there this hot desert planet how f I wonder how far it is away from the sun. Semi-major axis is 7 AU. Uh, it's not evaporating, I don't think. There are evaporating planets. That's one of the new things they added. They also added um, auroras, I mentioned. And, they, of course, they've got uh, dust and things like that. List the nearest stars. Dynamic lens flares. Oh, let's, let's, let's go and just click on another star. White main sequence star, blue subgiant. It'd be nice to have the solar masses listed here, to be honest. Yellow subgiant. Orange, just a lot of giant. Obviously, we're getting all the bright ones. We've already been orange dwarf, binary, blue giant, orange giant. I'm just clicking around until I find something. A cold ice giant. 
Oh, it's a planet. <laughs> thought that's an interesting star. Orange dwarf. I'm looking for a red dwarf. Of course, red dwarfs are very un unlikely to turn up here. I mean, I guess I could look at a uh, Proxima. I could probably search for Proxima Centauri, right? Prox, Proxima Centauri. Go there! Let us see what it is. Is it a red dwarf? You see? So, if you look, the solar ma absolute mag, is they're very low, basically. Luminosity. And I click on it, it tells you... Wait, ah, the wrong one. It's the wrong one. Click on this. There we go. Red dwarf. How, how do I get this thing to refresh? So, this red dwarf um, has a mass of, you know... 63 Jupiter mass. It doesn't even give you a mass in solar masses. It's that small. That means it's putting out a lot less energy. And this is so the solar closest planet to the Earth, or sorry, the closest um, star to the solar system is actually pretty faint because it's a red dwarf. Remember what I said that the faintest objects are, or the lightest objects are are red and the heaviest objects are blue. Perfect example. Okay, this is a cool ice giant. You see this one has it's a relatively close to a relatively close object. Semi major axis is not that far, but ooh, what's this? Is this a comet? It's a frozen asteroid. But it looks like it's a comet. Let's go to this. It looks like it has a tail. It's, it's but a couple of AU away. And so the gas giant, when they are heated up by the sun, you know, they have enough gravity to hold on to their atmosphere. But this, uh, this asteroid is not able to hold on to its atmosphere. So it produces a tail, I guess. And that is a white main sequence star. I wonder if I zoom out again it looks to me yeah this is this is I guess this is the nearest thing we've got to oh crap I flew right by it no not the yellow dwarf go there and land on this frozen asteroid and it looks kind of red how dull is that where's the Sun it's out there somewhere Passing away, I'm losing all my mass into deep space. Deep space, that's where my, <laughs> that's where I'm going to deep space. That's where my air is going. Deep space, it's just sucking me out. Oh, never mind. Oh, good dear. White main sequence star. I have no idea where I'm going here. Following, um, and I forget my, I forget, that's another main sequence star. Is there, oh, says it has 13 planets. Is that the one that I'm going to? It says I'm still, I'm still going there, no? Oh, that's the Barry Center. Um, 15, uh, frozen ice giant, frozen ice giant has nine moons. This has six planets. This has five. Let's go to it. And then, oh yeah, if I right click on this, I get to see what kind of planets it has. And we haven't got anything there. So let's click on this one. Warm, warm. Yeah, cold desert planet. Let's red giant, binary red giant. Oh, that's four draconis. Let us go there. Set speed to 20, 30, 40 parsecs per second. This is way faster than the Enterprise ever manages. 
Ooh, no, this is an interesting system. I don't know how to update this thing. We have, okay, we have this red giant and then we have a white main sequence star. It looks like we have a frozen gas giant here as well. This is the real planetary brightness scale. I should probably fix that. Oh, look, we have dwarf moons. We should have the dwarf moons listed as well. That was why I could see. That's why I, I could see that it said it had moons, but it wasn't showing up. Are we here? It's the, ah, there it is. Getting close. And, oh, is that, a, is that an aurora there? Or is that just... That is supposed to be Aurora. Oh! Whoa! Or... Okay. Man, that is interesting looking. Okay, turn around. This is just dark here. Man, I would not want to live here. Oh, it's because I was like totally into the atmosphere. And then I come out, that's what it is, and then we see the Aurora. Beautiful, although, yeah, I'm not gonna argue, he's probably done, the guy's probably done more math on this than I have, so I'm not gonna say that it shouldn't have anything, because I honestly don't know. What, what kind of planets does this have? Hot Selena, hot gas giant, warm ice giant, um, warm, 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 temperature, 340k. And this one's 271k, and does it has a bunch of moons. Maybe we've got something life-bearing. Cool to... F oh, look at that. That's pretty. It's around... Um, I guess it's around the blue star? And semi-major axis is 9 AU. That's... That's uh, pretty good. Okay. So look again, we have we have this one. Look at that. Hold on. Look on one side oh this is like man, this is totally like pitch black. On one side we've got the blue star and on the other side we have the red star, right? <laughs> of course this isn't a, a year round thing, but this is a this is a planet which has no night day night right now. None of these none of these moons do. Um what does it say? Axial so tilt, gravity, temperature, 533. Wait. This is the planet I'm looking at, right? B4. Planet 4. Okay. Hold on. How do I... Is it B4? Yeah, this is the one. I've got to click on this. Aha, it has 11 moons. Warm, Selena, Selena, Selena. Warm, warm. I just want to see if there's anything here that looks interesting. Which is the biggest one? Could I s sort these by size? Now let's turn off real sizes. They all look kind of meh. Let's go to this one. Just fly around. It's sitting there. This is going to have like illumination from all sorts of sources. Whoa! Let's spin around as we fly down to the surface and enjoy, enjoy the lens flare. Ooh, nice. I can see why this is a popular tourist destination. Right, let's try not to crash this time. This is not Kerbal Space Program. I'm far too good at just like crashing into the surface at ridiculous speeds. Yeah, you see, I'm giving it a chance to actually come up with the rendering before I crash into the surface. Probably a lot easier if I, if I let it do this one step at a time. I don't have it set to like the highest graphics just yet, but I, you know, again, if I was taking screenshots, I would probably go in and set the slider over to one side or the other. Man, okay, this is a nice looking thing. I should, I wonder, warm Selena, orange dwarf, orange dwarf. Let's um. Scythe the planets. Enter object name. Current. H I P. I see. I see, I see, I see. Now let's go. Let's take a look at the Milky Way again. Okay. Go to. So we're just coming out. Now. Let's fly into the middle. That's one thing I've wanted to do. 
I want to see if the model... Ooh, I kind of like this. I'm going to slow down just a bit. This is like... Wow. We're getting like deep in here. What is that? I have no idea. I wonder if they model... Oh, hold on. Should come out. I wonder if they model... I guess that's the, where the middle is. I wonder if they have like the, the black hole. It's a globular cluster. Oh, NGC. NGC numbers. They all came from a certain... Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's just go to this nebula. Where, how, how close is that? Uh, may not be very close at all. May in fact be beyond the galaxy. Ooh. It's another nebula. I don't know how to actually find this black hole because the search tools are beyond me. Let's close this solar system browser and just fly into this. I like the clouds. Ah, can I see anything here? A yellow dwarf, that's a couple of parsecs away. Let's go there. To this little thing, I have no idea what it is, but we'll go. Ooh, and the clouds are just parting out of my way as I fly. That looks that looks so good, I have to say. The guy that figured did this, I don't know if it's just one guy that does the whole thing, but like the people behind this really have a wonderful attention to detail. What have we got in this system? Hot, 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 temperate, cool. And cool being too cold. So let's take a look, see if there's anything around this. Temperate, temperate. Te okay. How big is this? 4,000, 4,500. Yeah, nothing there. Okay. Let's find something else. Let's just keep clicking on things and going places until we find something that looks halfway interesting. Let's turn off the real planet brightness option as well. There's no like sense of distance when you're floating through space. I should, I guess the way to do it is to boost my velocity up and just kind of shift sideways and watch the parallax. Ooh, it's a yellow giant. Okay. What have we got? Hot gas giant, hot Selena, warm, warm Terra. Uh, how warm? Temperature 324. That's a pretty hot thing. And that's pretty cold. We should go here though. It probably has major greenhouse issues, but I guess it's it's the right temperature to have. Um, yes, yeah, so this has a significant greenhouse effect, right, due to the atmospheric composition. But there may be oceans. It's certainly um, not so hot that it it won't support them. Ooh, is that green? I see. This could be a bona fide alien life world thing. Okay, so we have we have something that looks like it might be life-sustaining. I have to say, with an ocean that big, you would think that the greenhouse effect would be much more contr under control. We have a little mountain here. Come on, render for me! Render your curves for my pleasure! Hey, excellent. We should, like, totally go in and whack the detail up. Hold on. Settings... Settings, graphics, landscape level of detail 2. There we go. I wonder if that helps. Oh! I'll slow down a little more. 26 kilometers per second. We have more here to see. Right, now, render for me. Reveal your details so that I may gaze upon them. Wow. Uh, I do believe that looks like that's supposed to look like snow, but the temperature here is pretty hot. Maybe, maybe that's an average temperature. If I zoom out again, maybe I'm close to the poles. Um, not really. Let's just fly around. I don't know what angle this thing comes from. I guess I could just kind of fly over the poles of this thing. See what I see, or fly along the Terminator. Terminator. 
I'm looking for Sarah Connor. I am a friend of hers. Yes. Far better than its sequels. That it was the original. Okay. Render for me! No? I demand... I demand that you render quickly! I'm waiting! What can you show me? Uh, oh, there we're starting to see stuff. I think... I don't know if that thing up in the top right tells me it's rendering, but... That's actually looking pretty nice. Oh, crap, and I just crashed into the surface. Ah, uh, let me come up once more. This flying into the surface really kills your FPS. Let's fly out it once more. Ooh, layers upon layers of scenery. Nice. That's actually looking pretty cool. Ah, let's get back into space. So I'm going to try this, this trick to find nearby stars, right? So if I go sideways and I set my velocity to like multiple times the speed of light, what I'll start to see is... So we'll see the stars moving, right? And the ones nearest are going to move the most, so I can click on them. And it says this is a white star. It says yellow dwarf. What else do we see? Ah. Yellow dwarf. A triple system. Oh, that's a triple system. Let's go there. Let us go to the triple system. Because three stars are better than one. So yeah, look, you have a large, a yellow dwarf. And then there's the very center. Hold on, very center, this. Cold gas giant, frozen ice world, frozen ice giant. And that's that. Aha! There you go. So what it is, is there's a Barry Center, right, which has the A component. Oh, let's back out. And the second Barry Center is these two, which is a brown dwarf. Now, let's go to the brown dwarf. A brown dwarf... Uh, in this case, it is about 20 Jupiter masses. It's barely... And brown dwarfs basically don't get hot enough to become real stars. They may, in some cases, fuse deuterium and other, like, low... Um, you know, easy-to-fuse materials in their core. But even just a ball of gas collapsing under its own pressure, under its own gravity, is going to make, like, heat... And so that'll make it red hot. You know, Jupiter actually gives out more heat than it brings in because of... It's not because it's generating energy in the interior. It's simply that the, you know, the energy as it shrinks is released in the form of heat. And so this is us down onto the surface of this brown dwarf. The temperature is 1020K. It's not hugely hot. It's pretty cool. But, um... If I click on this, does it have any? No, it has nothing. This one has nothing either. And this is a red dwarf we can go to. So yeah, if you if you don't have enough mass, then you you're not quite a pla you're bigger than a planet, but you're not quite a star. So you become a brown dwarf, and eventually brown dwarfs co you know, cool down into nothing. Now, not to be confused with white dwarfs, which are the remnants of main sequence stars. The problem is that white dwarfs do actually cool down over time and theoretically they will become, they'll start out white but they will become red and eventually, you know, deep red and brown and black. They can become a black dwarf. But um, don't confuse these with the brown dwarfs which are stars that have barely, um, which have barely, you know, formed into a, a real object. Okay, what we have here, uh, the the stars, notice the stars on this one are so far out, the planets are so far out, they're pretty darn cold. Frozen gas giant, frozen ice world, let us go across, I wonder, I wonder if there is a button for black hole, that would be, yeah, no black hole. Um... I don't know what it's called. Sagittarius Scorpio. Scor. 
be old. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder what the best way to find the compact object that is the black hole. Well, that looks kind of cool. Ooh, wait a second, I've, I hadn't seen that before, look. This has like some sort of plate tectonics going on. I wonder if we get close to these whether they will show up as like actual rift valleys or if they just show up as a texture. Oh crap, I crashed into it again. I'm not very good at this. There, where, where was our... Yeah, it just looks like discolored areas rather than actual, you know, rifts. That's a shame. It looks so promising from orbit. It'd be nice to actually see, you know, cool... Oh, look! Oh, wait! No, that actually makes sense. Wow, this one actually works. This has got, like, total... I don't know, there's some, I guess this is some sort of weird, it could be a rift valley, I don't know, but it, it's a feet surface feature, which we could explain away by invoking plate tectonics. Not bad, I have not seen that so far. This one, let's go here. Bye-bye. It? It's got some moons too. That's a cool ice wall. That's, wait a second, this is... Diameter. These are pretty big. 247, 17. And that's that's pretty nice. We can do that. Let's go to its moon, which is an ice world. And I have no idea what I'm doing. At least you know with um with this game, with this simulation, you can't say that I'm a terrible player because it's not really a game. It's just an exploring thingy. Yeah. It does look like there's oceans or something going. Oh, I wonder, maybe this could be like oceans of liquid, you know, stuff. Liquid stuff. Oh, come on. We have... Yeah, I think, I think that's supposed to be like oceans of liquid... Um, hydrocarbons. Look, look at the, look at it. Okay, let's, oh, maybe not, actually. It does seem to have some sort of texture to it. I'm trying to come up a little higher. It does seem very flat, but it, it looks like, wow, I don't know what that is. It's like a giant sea of custard. Obviously. It's Candyland. We found Candyland. Actually, no. Look at the temperature. This is Ice Cream World. That's what it is. It's a giant lake of vanilla ice cream with, um, I don't know, white stuff coming out of it. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, these are the, these are the sugar mountains, obviously. That looks pretty cool, I have to say. Man, there's a lot. There's a lot of that. You just kind of fly around for your bit, and you're saying, you know, that looks pretty cool. Let's go to a globular cluster. Fly. Maybe this will have some big ass stars in the middle. That's a technical term, you know. Let us go to the middle of these globular clusters. Globular clusters frequently do have like entities in the middle. Are we there yet? Okay. Um, where are my stars? What happened to my globular cluster? Was that the one we went to? Did I... F it says 26 parsecs, right? I went there. And... I don't know, maybe I clicked on it to stop. I don't need this anymore. Okay, so we have... Half a globular cluster in this case. Whoa! 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 I'm wondering. This is possibly a real cluster, and what's happened is the ones on this side, on the left side, 
are, point, are nearer the Earth and therefore you have much better distances on them, whereas the ones on the other side you have worse distances for because they're obscured by everything else. Let's go into the middle. Let's make a quick dive into the heart of this cluster. Ooh. Well, what have we got here? Red giant. Red giant. Yeah, I don't know how you find black holes in this game. Lots of orange giant. That's another globular cluster. I don't care for that. And we can kind of move. Well, yeah, you know what? I'm going to slow myself down so I can see. See more things. Yellow giant. Orange giant. Jolly green giant. Yeah, that's a red giant. That's too far away. Another red giant. It's a binary. Red giant. I don't know what I'm looking for here, honestly. Yellow dwarf. That's a G-type star. You are our favorite G-type star. Let's go to this one. It's just like standing out a mile. Yeah, NGC, incidentally, uh, it stands for New General Catalog, and I believe it was compiled by uh, Dreyer. Not not the ice cream maker, but uh, Luis Emil Dreyer. I forget his name, but he actually did this at Arma Observatory, which was the place where I studied for five years. I studied astronomy there for five years, and I do remember uh, they had a copy of the New General Catalog like on display in the glass cabinet. It was pretty cool to understand, you know, that's where these objects got their names from. I wonder if there's a contact oh, binary. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's go in. Is there anything here? Ooh, this looks totally oblate. I gotta get close to Wow, it's like the egg shaped star. I bet I guess this is spitting so fast that it really it forms highly oblate surface this is just like it's like a brain in space i am the energy brain and look what is this that's like right beneath it there's a look at this thing it's just like right near this <laughs> i wonder if this thing actually enters into the atmosphere that's that's pretty cool so this is this is the scorched selena and then scorched desert scorched 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 Hot, hot, temperate, and then you can look at its moons. Ah, warm Selena. I, I want to go back. Let's go to this thing. Go and look very close. I honestly, I, I don't know what I'm doing and where I'm going with this video, but I pr should probably uh, get ready to... I should probably... <laughs> Scorched Desert. I think it's maybe time for me to... Time for me to call it quits. Oh, look, it's another brown planet with fractal landscapes. How very nice. And let me zoom in over the surface. Ooh, I wonder what galaxy that is. Oh, that's the Andromeda galaxy. Well, of course, we all know about this. This looks very weird. I'd somehow think in this case, maybe they should consider filling in the, the missing data. Let's go here. So that's the... Wow, this is pretty close as well. I do not think these things would be too dynamically stable if they are this close together, to be honest. Um, hmm. In fact, wait a second. That looked... I'm going to turn this around. Oh my goodness, look at this. These, these two things are listed as separate planets rather than satellites, but they are so close together that I think, hold on, I'm pretty sure that these things would not be stable. And if they if they were in any orbits, they would eventually collide. I, I like the way the brain is pulsing. It's saying, it's calling to me. It's saying, it's trying to, I don't know, it's trying to suck up my brains. Okay, well, I think I'm really just going to call it quits before I get... <laughs> I get wasted. I waste. It's midnight, and I've wasted all my time on this. Seriously, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.